Great. Yeah, so I'm here today to talk about Filecoin Plus. Uh, for folks who have uh, been keeping track of our ecosystem, you may have heard of this as verification, verified clients, verified deals, all of that compresses into the same thing. It is now called Filecoin Plus. Uh, but I want to talk today about how we can use this to help incentivize useful storage on the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and so uh, I want to hopefully by the end of my 15 minutes be able to answer two questions for you. The first is why and the second is how. Uh, the first is why, why do we need this to begin with? And the second is how, how does this actually enable uh, incentivizing useful storage on the network? Uh, but to start, it's probably useful to start with the mission of Filecoin. Uh, so our aim here is to build a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Uh, and we've talked at length about the technical side of this. Uh, how do we use the blockchain to actually make this possible? But it's also worth double clicking into the economics to make sure that from that perspective as well, we're set up for success. Uh, and so in order to do that, it's worth considering how do miners make a return inside of the Filecoin economy? Uh, so miners can offer different types of storage services, but it really boils down into two basic categories. Uh, the first is committed capacity, where they offer supply to the network. Uh, this is uh, typically empty storage that can later be upgraded. And this is good. This is something that we want a lot of. Uh, and the second is through deals. Um, but when you consider deals, you could actually think of them in two forms. Uh, the first are real deals. Uh, these are deals with actual clients trying to store real data. This is great. We want tons of this as well. Um, but the second is malicious deals. And these are deals where miners are actually just storing data with themselves, uh, typically trying to store compressible bytes, things that allow them to get the benefits of actually having data being committed to the network uh, without any of the risk of actually holding onto someone else's data. This is bad. Uh, too much of this on the network. And instead of having a network that actually achieves the overarching mission, instead, we'll just have a network filled with garbage data. And so if we're to take a step back and think of the capacity of the network, so all the storage that's available on Filecoin, and think about the segmentation of these three different groups, we can see uh, different ways of thinking about the health of the network. In our ideal state, what we'd want to see is tons of capacity that really is servicing real deals. Uh, so tons of capacity and tons of activity of real users trying to do real things. Some fraction of that also being allocated so that the network can grow, uh, but very little, almost ideally none, uh, being used in a malicious way just to try to reap uh, block rewards. Uh, of course, the flip of that, the really bad state of the network would be if you had tons of committed capacity, so tons of empty storage just sitting idle on the network, of the actual activity on the network, if the majority of that is happening uh, to just promote uh, malicious deals, people who are uh, just storing garbage data to store, get block rewards, uh, obviously this would be bad. Uh, and the reason this would be bad is because if the overarching mission is to create a network that is trying to become a robust foundation for humanity's information, we don't want that to actually only be served by a small fraction of the data on the network. Uh, and so if we were to try to think about how do the economics set us up? Uh, it becomes quite clear early on uh, that there is, in, in stasis, uh, there's uh, an uphill battle to be fought. When you think about malicious deals, um, the, the miner still has to pay a cost. They have to seal the data that they're putting in. There's a cost in terms of the disk time, uh, but there's a, there's a reward in the form of block rewards. But if you think about a real deal, someone who's actually trying to service a client, there's a bunch of additional costs that are introduced as well. Uh, there's the transfer costs, so there's the risk of actually transmitting the data, uh, there's loss risk, so there's any number of adverse events that could cause a miner's uh, system to go offline and put them in a state where they wouldn't be recoverable. Uh, there's the cost of the time value of money, so there's like opportunity costs for taking on a specific client's deal versus just stealing additional sectors. Uh, and those costs have to be borne by someone. Uh, so without changing the crypto econ, if we just have one uniform lens, uh, those costs end up being borne uh, uh, by the client, the client has to make up the difference between uh, the benefit of a malicious deal compared to a re real deal. And this, of course, is bad. This means that Filecoin operating uh, in just a very basic sense would require clients to pay a really high cost in order to operate the network. Um, and so if the point of the network is to create a robust human, uh, foundation for humanity's information, what we'd ideally want the network to be able to do is to incentivize the storage of real data uh, above uh, malicious data or malicious deals or just garbage data. Uh, and when you think about that a little bit harder, of course, that becomes quite uh, quite difficult because storing data by itself, uh, it's hard to distinguish what good data versus bad data is. Uh, and so the observation is that we don't actually need to know anything about the data in order to distinguish real deals and malicious deals. 
if instead we can distinguish the clients, if we can determine who are the clients that are trying to store legitimate data, to use the network as intended, and distinguish them from people who are just trying to be self-serving uh, and instead just root block rewards, we can then ideally bend the crypto econ to help massively allocate rewards to the people who are trying to do uh, the good thing, uh, and then have those rewards basically help subsidize the cost of storage. And one other sub point, which I'll touch on again in a little bit, is if uh, when we think about trust in this context, where we're trusting clients to be doing good things with the data, uh, with this power that we're imbuing uh, upon them, uh, we can think about that not as a binary of do I trust you or do I not trust you? We can think of that as a spectrum of how much do I trust you based on the information that you've given me. Uh, and so obviously, as we start talking about this and this notion of trust and trying to figure out who is a trustworthy client and who is not, uh, it starts raising more questions as we keep pulling on that thread. Who decides who's trustworthy and who's not? Who decides on the people who decide who is trustworthy and not? Uh, how do we ensure that whoever is making these choices is doing so in a way that's transparent uh, and that they're uh, being held accountable for any decisions that they make? How do we protect against abuse? Uh, you start pulling this thread and it leads to a giant rabbit hole. And so that gets to the second part of my presentation, which is the how. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to at least briefly introduce the concepts uh, that we introduced with Falcon Plus. So what is Filecoin Plus? Uh, Filecoin Plus aims to add a layer of social trust to the Filecoin network to incentivize useful storage. We do this uh, in a number of ways, but the way that we think about this uh, is by splitting it into uh, different layers of a cake. Uh, so at the top, uh, we have principles. These principles are what basically drive the motivating function for all of Filecoin Plus. These are the facts that have to be true about any framework that was going to attempt to answer the questions of how we can actually build this social layer on top of Filecoin. Uh, if uh, after this talk you want more details, I encourage you to read step three. Uh, this is where we actually uh, wrote out the full paper on how this should work, um, or at least from the principal side and the instantiation of the bottom two layers. Uh, after the principles, we have the mechanisms and operations. These are actually how uh, Filecoin Plus should actually operate. Uh, the mechanisms, designs, the rules, the responsibilities, the actors, basically all of the different uh, components that should exist inside of this uh, subcomponent of the Filecoin ecosystem. The operations define how these different components need to interact with each other uh, in order for uh, the process to work overall. Uh, definitions for all of these things happen inside of the governance repo, which is also linked to from FIP03. Uh, but you can also find it if you go to the Filecoin project slash go to governance. Markets defines how all of this stuff ends up uh, instantiating on chain and the actual functioning of uh, this process in action. And so for the rest of this talk, what I'd like to go through is cover the principles, because I think it's the most important part to make sure that we as a community have alignment, but then also briefly touch on some of the mechanisms and the operations. And so the principles, uh, again, uh, the goal of the principles is to define uh, the overarching function uh, and the facts that have to be true about the framework uh, for how we construct social trust on the Falcoin network. Um, these principles were inspired by Dr. Eleanor Ostrom's work, uh, Nobel winning work, uh, Governing the Commons, where she basically talked about how communities can govern natural resources. And so I wanna touch through each of these to give a little bit more context and what it actually means uh, for in our, in our uh, in our ecosystem. Uh, so the first thing that has to be true is that Falcon Plus has to promote decentralization and diversity. Uh, so specifically, it has to do this uh, to help protect against uh, uh, centralization of control, but it also has to protect against uh, different points of failure, uh, whether that can uh, take the form of token production issues, uh, ownership, uh, centralization of ownership, uh, governance issues, and so on. The second thing that we wanted to also be able to promote is diversity of uh, different characteristics of the network, whether that be product offering, geographic distribution, uh, different types of use cases. Uh, we believe that for all participants of the Falcon economy, having both of these be promoted is useful uh, <clears throat> for growing the health of the network. The second thing uh, that Falcon Plus needs to be able to promote is transparency and accountability. Any activity that happens through Falcon Plus whether it's governance decisions about the rules and any changes to those rules, whether it's decisions about who should be made a notary or who should be given power on the network, or whether it's any sort of specific allocation decision, all of those should be easily auditable, auditable uh, by anyone on the network and it should require no special privileges. 
The third thing that needs to be promoted by Filecoin Plus is community governance. Uh, the commu Filecoin community needs to collectively be able to decide on the principles, mechanisms, operations, and markets that ultimately will govern the election, rotation, and actions of all the actors participating in this process. Uh, all actors who decide to participate in this process also agree uh, to abide by the framework that's defined by this community. <clears throat> Next, Filecoin Plus has to help promote a low cost dispute resolution. Inevitably, uh, certain decisions will end up uh, requiring challenges. And so it must be the case that any challenges uh, that are to be posed uh, do so in a consistent way. And the, the criteria for posing a challenge are clear and transparent and easily discoverable. Uh, of course, as a corollary to that, any challenges that are made uh, should be uh, easily addressed in a cheap, well-defined process and result in a clear outcome while supporting due process. Uh, the next thing that must be promoted is limited trust earned over time. Uh, as we said before, trust is a spectrum. And so there's two things that must be the case. Number one, it should be the case that uh, trust can be established in multiple ways. It shouldn't be the case that only a single definition of trust is dominant. And the second is that trust should be increased based on good faith execution and transparency of actions. Next, uh, Filecoin Plus should help promote compliance. Uh, so anyone who's participating in this process should agree that they aren't going to use this power uh, to intentionally subvert expectations or to violate the preferences of others. As a specific example here, if a miner has uh, terms of service about what content they want to store, uh, someone shouldn't be using this process in order to violate that. And lastly, uh, the points of this process is to help uh, build a useful storage network. The ultimate goal of Filecoin Plus is to accelerate the time frame at which uh, over which uh, storage goods and services on Filecoin become more useful and attractive. Uh, this program plays an essential role in shaping the product offering, and so decisions that are made uh, should ultimately be used in service of helping promote and grow the Filecoin ecosystem. So with all of those principles being said, uh, the points of these are to be the orienting function or like the North Stars that we can use to help uh, align the specifics uh, as we define uh, the instantiation of the mechanisms and uh, the operations that people, or that this process will use. Um, so I won't go through this whole diagram today uh, because I have one minute and 30 seconds left. Uh, but if you want to go through, uh, I, I would encourage folks to go look at FIP03, uh, where we actually talk in a little bit more detail about how all of these different uh, actors inside of this ecosystem from community governance, root key holders, notaries, and clients, how they interact with each other and the intended processes. Um, with my remaining time though, I do wanna double click into one specific component here where uh, you as community members actually can help us shape a really important part. So as you see here, notaries are selected uh, through this process uh, of a community defined rubric. And so inside of that governance repo, um, the notary selection process will evaluate notaries and determine their quality based on their quality and experience as a notary. So any previous experience they've had and also uh, quality and robustness of their allocation strategy. But defining the properties that we want of this rubric is something that needs to go through and be agreed upon by the governance or the community governance. Um, so we have a default thing in place, uh, but this is ex a place where we could really use uh, more feedback and insight from the community. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm on Slack as JNTHNBCTR. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know.